podcast this week. You are listening to Slam Talk. I'm WWE Fan 1993, and today my guest is Steven Garcia, who is training to be a professional wrestler at the Paradise Valley Wrestling Training School. How's it going, man? Hey, man, it's going very well, brother. Very well. How are you doing? Uh, I'm all right, you know, been trying to do what everything going on in the world, but thankfully wrestling has been taking me out of it a bit because it's been getting pretty crazy out there. That's good, that's good, man. That's, that's, that's always, that's for, always does the job for me anytime I'm feeling it's hard for me. All I have to do is watch some wrestling or even go get in the ring myself and just have a blast. And so, yeah, same here. Like, I mean, not get in the ring, good guy. <laughs> but um, for me, uh, yeah, I just turn it on and I just kind of like, let everything go away for a bit. So I mentioned before you were training at Paradise Valley Wrestling. Um, what kind of made you want to train and do all that stuff? Give us a little bit of your background. Man, honestly, I loved professional wrestling for as long as I can remember since the age of five years old, man. My background actually came from baseball. Yes. Which I played baseball my entire life. I was never able to actually find the right place to actually really train professional wrestling. So baseball was mainly my, my main background, but mm -hmm. I've been into wrestling and I've been loving professional wrestling since the age of five years old. My uncle actually had a special needs. Um, he's the one that actually introduced me to professional wrestling when I was about five years old, six years old. And ever since then, I've loved it ever since then. My first match that I ever saw was literally the Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan at um, SummerSlam, right? Or uh, maybe WrestleMania yeah. Six. Yeah, WrestleMania yeah, Six. Yeah. When they went up against each other, when I saw that was the first match I ever saw when I was five years old. Wow, and man! I've, ever since then, I've I've been in love with professional wrestling. Then I got introduced to the Hardy Boys, and mm. it was over from there. Yeah, that's kind of funny because, like, for me, I remember like my brother used to always watch, and he used to like fuck with me because I was scared of the Undertaker. <laughs> so he'd like he'd like make me watch it and crap. But I remember watching WrestleMania 2000, the Triangle Ladder Match with um, the Hardy Boys, the Dullies, and Edge and Christian, and that was kind of when I sort of like focused my attention. I was like, wow, like they're doing some crazy stuff. And I can remember from 2000 on, I was like seven, I think. Um, when I started watching it. So, yeah, I remember all that good stuff. So, you kind of remember more of, like, you grew up more in the Attitude Era then. Yeah, I'm way more from the Attitude Era. Um, that's why I really started focusing on watching it by myself. Mm -hmm. But before that, before I ever got introduced to the Attitude Era, it was just, like, home like home VCR tapes that my uncle used to have. <laughs> and he'll replay the matches that he once recorded when he was a kid. And he <laughs> showed off. Randy Savage, you show me all Hogan, the yeah. Warrior, Coco Beware, um, the Bushwhackers, Doink the Clown, like, I can keep naming names. All the gimmicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it man. was, it was, there's always a character back then, which, um, is interesting to see compared to now, where it's like everything is so, like, they read from the scripts and it's so different now, so... <laughs> Do you have any sort of matches from that time period that really drew you in aside from Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior? That really drew me in, honestly, from that time, we're talking the 90s, was the Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels Iron Man match at WrestleMania. Oh, okay. That right there was, that right there was really set, that really set the bar for me too, right there, you know? I'm not gonna lie, that epic, that was an epic moment, they went into overtime, they it was, they thought it was gonna be a no contest until Gorilla. I think it was Gorilla Monsoon that came out and literally switched, made it, made it go to overtime. Yeah, it was just, it was just awesome, man. That that match was great. And I think that was when he first won the title, so that was even a bigger moment for him too. Exactly. So made me kind of, made me kind of feel like that's what I want to feel one day. Ah, cool. So Shawn Michaels is an inspiration to you too, then as well. That as well. And then when Jeff Hardy finally won the WWE Championship at Armageddon, I think it was two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Finally won the WWE Championship at Armageddon. That's when that also is. So it's more than just one moment that yep. made me turn life into this. You know what I'm saying? And did you see yourself liking more? Because like nowadays, there's always a topic of does Vince like smaller guys or? bigger guys for me i've always kind of like guys like rvd like you said jeff hardy even now i like ricochet all those guys who might be considered smaller were you more of a fan of those guys or more fans of the ones that kind of look like big beefy dudes i've always been i've always liked just professional wrestling in general yep. so if you just have the ability and you are the person that 
basically takes my attention to whether you're a high flyer or a powerhouse, even a fast lobby guy, you know? But yeah. If you take my attention and you get me the right way, I'm going to watch your match and I'm going to enjoy it regardless whether it's high flying or if it's just a legit technical wrestling match. Yep. And I, I love both. What do you think about AEW? Are you a fan? Do you not watch it? To be honest with you, I don't watch it. Yeah. But I came up from it with it from time to time because the main reason is because of John Moxley. Yep. You know? Yep. Hey, man, don't get me wrong. Chris Jericho will always go down as a legend. You know, yep. you can't deny that. And then we got Cody Rhodes because he's the son of Dusty Rhodes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I catch on the highlights here and there, and I catch a couple of clips. Um, I barely even watch WWE anymore. I, you know, my schedule will be too busy. So, I try to catch the highlights as much uh, as I can. Every yeah. company. And sometimes that's better because <laughs> some of the shows go on and on and on. But yeah, yeah. that's another thing too. The last time I actually really stood there and actually watched a show, like a Raw or a SmackDown, it was horrible, man. And yeah. They watching it. Like, the highlights were better. Um, are you a fan of NXT or are you just main roster? Oh, no, I'm, of course. You gotta, you gotta give the credit what credit is due. And NXT is doing their thing, man. NXT yeah. is trying to strive as much as they can. You know, I'm still stuck in old school wrestling, classic mm-hmm. wrestling. Like, that's still what I prefer to watch. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, it's a new generation. It's a new world, and it's a time to adapt, and you gotta like what's out there. So, yeah. And that's, what's, that's the product. That's what's on TV. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Mm-hmm. If you semi like it, catch the highlights, you know? Yeah, and it seems like now there's someone for everyone. Like, there's Nia Jax, who, you know, a young girl who might be a bit chubbier can look up to her and feel like, you know, they have a a spot or someone like Keith Lee, like all these other... It's not just one size now. It's it's all different. There's a whole bunch of different sizes now, and Mm -hmm. I think the one that really changed that was Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Uh, To be honest with you, because when Mysterio won the world title at WrestleMania 22, no Mm -hmm. one would ever... No one would have ever thought that a guy that's five foot six, hundred seventy pounds, would be world heavyweight champion. Yep. You know, nobody were nobody ever would have thought of that. Besides Rob Van Dam, Rob Van Dam was the closest to that weight. Shawn Michaels, you could say, was the closest to the small that you yes. could say actually walked out as champion. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it, they were still six foot two, two hundred thirty pounds. You know, two hundred twenty five pounds. So they were still up there in the mid range. So they were still eligible walking out. Yep. But now in this world, nowadays, it's just it's really harsh. You know? It's really hard for these big guys, for these small guys. Yeah, and like Rey Mysterio, I remember when he came on and he just, like jumping off the top of the cage when he came on SmackDown in 2002, and you're right, I didn't really see him, like I always thought he was a great wrestler, but I never really saw him as a world champion, kind of like Eddie Guerrero, and then when they won that title, they kind of made it their own. Mm-hmm, that's true, and uh, also talking about Eddie Guerrero. Yes. You know, he also changed it for small guys because he was actually the smallest WWE champion at one, at one time. Yeah. Until Rey Mysterio won the title. And what's crazy to think is him being small, you know, because it's like you see him and he's tall, but considered in wrestling, he's considered small. Yeah, they're considered small. So, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it just changed the world for everything, especially when Mysterio won, walked out champion. It just changed the world and made everyone and made everybody feel like they could do this. Yeah. So yeah. when did you say to yourself, like, I know you talked about Shawn Michaels winning the title and you kind of feel like, okay, maybe this is something, you know, someone like me could do. When did you feel like, okay, I'm going to pro wrestling school. This is what I'm doing. I literally, about, I say a year ago, mm-hmm. back this was when I really said, you know what, I'm not going to go for an answer. I'm not going to sit here and just sit around anymore and keep watching this. I'm going to do this now. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to stop until I find school. I looked everywhere, and I just, man, I literally took myself out of my out of my house, and I just looked for a school everywhere I possibly can. I made phone calls until I found Paradise as pro wrestling, and it changed my life forever. It was one of the best experiences, one of the best moves I could have ever possibly done now. And I'm just waiting and busting my ass and doing the hard. I'm basically working as hard as I possibly can to make that first big impact. And it's going to happen, you know. Hopefully, if God's good and everything goes right, and it's always up to me. Yeah. i got to go with my full potential, and I'm giving it my all, and I'm going to debut. It's going to happen. I believe in you, man. Now, yeah. give me some of those experiences. What are some things that maybe 
people who aren't in wrestling school might have a misconception about that, you know, you, you know, cause you're actually in it. Well, it's kind of hard to answer that one, but it's like, say like this, if you sit here and think that this is a joke, you sit here and think that what you see on TV is, is, is what you see. Well, you got it all wrong because when you step in that ring and you actually go in there, that's, that's, that's hard. That's hard, man. You yeah. I mean, you got to protect yourself. You got to make sure you do the best of your ability and come out of there, man, a lot because you get hurt, man. Mm -hmm. It really hurt. It's a very dangerous sport. It's one of the hardest sports I've ever had to get into. Mm -hmm. And it's just the main thing is protecting yourself. It's very dangerous in that ring. And the people that sit there in the house and think that this is a joke, man, they got a whole other thing coming because I guarantee you they won't step in that ring. No, and even like the people that are like, oh, it, like it's it's not fake, you know. They do, you know, come together before the match and talk uh, talk about stuff. But whatever happens out there happens, you know. It's not like they're prepared, like it's live, and someone could really get hurt. It's not like they're playing with like mats and like they're actually there's wood underneath. <laughs> so it, it's not like. Even when you prepare yourself for a boxing match mm -hmm. and you go for the weigh-ins, what do they do? They're talking about the match, right? They're talking about the fight. The two mm -hmm. fighters are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. You know? It's in every sport. Yep. Yep. Everywhere exactly. they talk. It's just, just going to happen. But these people in these other worlds behind, this, behind the couch over there, behind the TV, they just think they know it all, man. Yep, they do until they get in there. Exactly. So now, who would you say has been the most helpful training wise um, over at Paradise Valley Wrestling? I'm going to say, I'll have to say Paul Roma and Macy, man. They are awesome teachers. And I'm not even going to lie, everyone else in Paradise Valley Pro Wrestling have been a very good helping hand. They're amazing people. They're a family. You know, you walk in there and they're going to accept you with open arms, man. They, they just love you what you can bring to the table and they love who you are as a person. It's all about respect and discipline, especially mm -hmm. that's the main thing. If you're respectful and you're disciplined, you're going to go a long way there, man. They're just awesome people, though. Like, you walk in there, they'll teach you to your best abilities and you're going to, you're destined to walk out. It's up to you. If you don't want to learn, then that's on you. But if you walk in there and you give them your full potential, you will walk out knowing something. You're going to learn walking in there. Nice. So what does a normal training day look like for you so let's say you you know what what's your normal routine my own routine I, mean, I would literally wake up in the morning i'll go to work i'll come home i'll work out i'll train i eat my vitamins i eat my protein i make sure i have my body healthy you know no smoking no drinking mm -hmm. None of that stuff. Make sure you stay away from all that stuff. But eat healthy, man. Lay off all that McDonald's. Lay off all that soda. Just mm -hmm. always keep drinking water and do the best you possibly can when you walk in there. Roll, do your rolls, do your back rolls. You know, lift. You're trying to get big. You know, you want to be that big guy. You know, hit the gym. Put a lot of dedication. You want to be that small guy. Make sure you're always working in the brain. Try to get your cardio right. That's the best. That's the most. That's the best I could probably explain it to you because you gotta actually get that foot in there to really experience. You to know, know what I'm saying? Yeah, to be able to like know how much it takes to train and the time exactly. and the effort. How much it really takes. Yeah. So now, um, how did you develop like your skill set in the ring? Like, because I know you said you're still training. How does that go about? And man, you just is as you go. You know, basically, you gotta do it as you go. Once yeah. you step in there, what you learn and you work around that, you know? Yeah. And how did, do they decide, so like you said, your training, how do they decide, like, when it's time for you to have a match? How does that go about? To me, that is up to, it's up to the booker. That's mm -hmm. up to the company. That's up to them. I have, that's not up to, you know what I mean? That's up to them. If I'm, up, if I'm there to my full potential and they see that I'm doing the best I possibly can and I know how to work, that's all... That's all that matters, and if they like me, they want to see me in the show, then they'll book me, but whoever it is, I haven't really gotten to that level to really fully explain how it goes. I'm only going by what I've seen yeah, yeah. and what I've done, but yeah, that's basically how it goes. It's ma mainly up to them. Whatever they decide to do up there is whoever they book is how they do it. Gotcha. And now, what would you tell someone? I know you explained a lot about like the training and how like you kind of have to really like invest and be in it to understand it but what would you tell someone who 
wants to train and wants to be an athlete and would like to possibly go to Paradise Valley Wrestling or any wrestling school, what are some things that you think it's important that they need to know to be dedicated and hopefully get a match and, and get themselves out there? Basically, your full potential. You got to go in there wanting it. If you not really, if you don't really want it, it's not going to happen. You're not going to learn. It's all about wanting it. You got to want it. It has to come from your heart. Mm-hmm. And it so seems like it's a, yeah, it seems like there's like a community and it kind of, and it's, um, it's different than what most people would have seen because most people think, okay, you put on a pair of tights, you get out there, you fight, it's done, but there's a lot that goes into it, obviously. There's Have, a lot that goes into it mentally yep, and physically. Yep. Yeah, because also, too, like, I've been watching um, the Undertaker Last Ride documentary, and you don't really realize the toll it takes on a person until you see Undertaker. Like, he can barely walk. He's limping. And um, you just see him, and you kind of feel like, man, like, this dude put everything on the line for us. So you kind of appreciate them a bit more once you learn sort of what they put their bodies through. Yeah, man. Um, so now my next question for you is how do you, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see myself traveling, man. I yep. see myself competing all around the world, man. I see yep. myself being in all of the main cards, just doing the best of my abilities, whether it's the first match or whether it's the last match, you know? Who but, would you say your, um, dream opponent or opponents would be? My dream opponent, I ain't even gonna lie to you, I would love to one day in my lifetime face and go up against Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. I would love to face Magnus, actually. Magnus. Magnus, okay. A guy in my mind that one day in my lifetime I would love to step in the ring with. You know, that's been a guy I watched throughout TNA, mm -hmm. and with the British invasion. I'm yeah, you know, yeah. Very good. And he's also married to Mickey James. I watched her all the time. You know, wrestling, she did one of the best, actually, she did one of the best storylines I've seen in the company's in history, so, you know, I would love to one day be involved in a match with him. Uh, I would love Abyss, even though as small as I am, I would love to actually do a, do a match with Abyss. Yeah. So now, how would you say your, like, style is? Do you consider yourself, more, like, if you were to go into the ring tomorrow with your mindset now... Do you feel like you, like, what type of fighter do you see yourself being? Do you see yourself more being technical, hardcore, high-flying? What do you see? I'm more into the technical high-flying. So okay. you'll see me pop in some chain wrestling, maybe do some quick run through the ropes. You see with each other, some over-the-top over, over the top ropes, suicide dives. You're going to see me probably jump the top ropes. But it's going to be a very technical match with a lot of high-flying involved. Nice, nice. That's what people could expect from you. One of the like craziest technical wrestlers I've seen um, is Shayna, just because when she manipulates the joints and stuff, you could actually see it, and she'll like step on their hand or like step on their elbow, and like it just oh, you. I kind of like that and respect that because you know it's going to hurt. So when you see someone applying a move or a technical move or something like that, submission, it looks like it's going to hurt. So I respect those wrestlers a lot. Yeah. And so as far as wrestling is going, how are you liking things uh, wrestling-wise? Who do you think is going to get the upper hand, AEW, WWE? Do you think it matters? To be honest, I think John Moxley is going to keep the open hand for right now. Yeah. He's not dropping that title no time, so that belt's staying around him. And in WWE right now, I honestly have to give it to Iroh Iro Sherry, I think her name is. The oh, one Io Shirai, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Io Shirai, yep. She's going to take it to the next level in NXT now that she's the NXT Women's Champion. You know, she's going to take it to another level. Right? Yeah. I see it. I don't know, WWE sometimes changes everything at the end of the day. One day you'll see them, like, rising like this, and then tomorrow you won't even hear from them. Zach exactly how they did to Yep, yeah. and I yeah. remember um, seeing Io Shirai, and I was like, wow, like, she's crazy. Have you ever been to a live show before? To be honest, no. no. One of my biggest goals that I'm trying to do is that the day that I actually go to a WWE show, I am in the show. Oh, that's your so, goal. <laughs> I'm not really trying to go to a show or even see it yet until I'm actually the one wrestling a match there. That is a very good goal. Why bother going if you're not on the card? 
That's a very good so goal. I'm not going to see the stage until I'm actually walking down it. You know, exactly. I'm not going to see a WWE ring until I'm wrestling in it. Gotcha. You know, or even at least a performance center. Something, you know? What about AEW if you got the opportunity to go there? Oh, I can't, man. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that neither. That's another thing. That's another live show to me. I'm not going to go to a live show that big until I'm the one on the card. But at mm-hmm. the end of the day, hey, I will still go. You know, the main thing is WWE. If it, if it was to be there, because I do have kids, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you know? yeah. And if my son or my daughter was to ever want to one day go before I'm either there, then, you know, I'm going to have to skip that goal of mine and just, you know, <laughs> give them the life that they want, you know, and enjoy them what they want to see. Now, um, I actually was going to ask you about the being a part of a live show. Um, have you gotten in the ring at all yet, or are you still just basic training? I haven't wrestled a match. Okay. okay. I'll tell you that. I haven't wrestled a match. But I'm training. I've been in the ring. I've been doing, I'm going to my fullest ability of training and I'm doing what I possibly, the most I possibly can to be in that ring and finally in front of a live crowd. Gotcha. What do you think about the recent um, switch ups where, like, for example, the revival just went to AEW? You have John Moxley in there. What do you think about Russell switching up? Because last time I saw this was back in 95, and it's kind of surreal for me to kind of be able to relive it again and be like, oh, wow, now I can actually see what the Monday Night Wars were like. Even though it's different, what do you think of the rest? Do you see them coming back to WWE, or do you think they're going to stay long-term in AEW? Well, John Moxley for sure is going to come back to WWE no time soon. Yeah. He's going to be long-term away from his company. They're going to have to you know, get some heat away and cool down. And shit for a while, I don't see them coming back at all. Yeah, maybe like another maybe five, maybe eight years, I could possibly see Moxley coming back. Yeah. And that's because of the Shield. Basically, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, that's the main reason why I actually see Dean coming back. Besides that, I don't, I won't see him coming back to the WWE. All right. So we're going to do a quick round. And basically what this means is I'm going to give you a category and you're going to give me an example. So for an example... Most overrated wrestler, in your opinion? Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair, okay. Um, most underrated wrestler, in your opinion? Ricochet. Ricochet. Uh, favorite woman wrestler? Favorite woman wrestler? I'm not even going to lie, but Becky Lynch. Becky, Becky? Lynch been, before when she was at Irish Little Girl, I used to come out on, it, on, on NXT. Mm-hmm, yep, with the the, um, the goggles and everything. <laughs> what about um, least favorite women's wrestler? Least favorite women's wrestler, I ain't even gonna lie, Sasha Banks. Sasha, yeah, hey, I agree with you there. <laughs> um, yeah. How about um, favorite rivalry? My favorite rivalry, honestly, it has to be the CM Punk and Jeff Hardy. Mm, okay. Um, favorite tag team? My favorite tag team of all time. That's actually a good one because I have more than one. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's definitely the Road Warriors if we're talking back in the day. Mm-hmm. The Road Warriors will be on my top list. I like the Rockers, man. The Rockers were very, very good. They're yeah. also on my top five. I ain't gonna lie, the Hardys, definitely the Hardys gonna have to be in my top five. And the Generation X, the Brothers of Destruction, I can, those are like the best tag teams. Mm-hmm. Power and Glory, for example. You know, yeah. like the yeah. Power and Glory. Just Paul Roma and um, Hercules, yep. They're like one of their great tag teams, man. Those like you can't pick, I can't have just one. Just you know, one, I can have yeah. one individual guy, but tag teams, man. There was so many greats. Mm-hmm. What about favorite faction or stable? My favorite faction, if we're talking modern day of this era, it has to be the Shield. The Shield the mm-hmm. of this era, but if we go back in time. It's gonna have to be the Heart Foundation, man. Oh, okay. Heart Foundation. Um, favorite Intercontinental Champion. My favorite Intercontinental Champion of all time. That's a good one. I'm gonna have to go with Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, man. Ooh, okay. Kind of, kind of made that title when he won it at the at the um, what was it WrestleMania, right? WrestleMania at the ladder match against. Yeah, Michaels. yeah, yeah. WrestleMania ten. Yeah, WrestleMania ten. I think that I think that was actually here in um, Connecticut. 
Well, the one um, WrestleMania 11 was here because I remember my brother went to the um, access that they had for the first time. He had a choice to either go to the access or go to the WrestleMania, and he chose to be the wrestlers and go to access, which probably I would have chosen too. Um, okay, so how about this worst storyline in your opinion? The worst storyline, honestly, is that Lana and Rusev thing. Oh, yeah. And Bobby Lashley, that was so horrible, man. Like, yes. A storyline that you were really passionate about. That was a good one, actually. That's a good one. I'm going to have to say the Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Oh, yeah, 2002, yep. Yeah. yeah. I remember watching Raw when they actually showed the, like, backstage where, like, they're glitching and showing, revealing who's the one that attacked them. And he's like, it was you. <laughs> and I remember, like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it. Um, like, I knew, I knew something was weird, especially when they brought DX back to 2002. And yeah. they did their first entrance and since, like, what, the WCW Wars? They did their first entrance since then. And I don't know where, as soon as they go to cut their promo, Triple H's spikes put a pedigree. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. it was... That right there was passion right there. It made me, it really hit me in the heart because I'm like, damn, two best friends that really rode everywhere, went everywhere together and just ended like that, you know, like no, no reason. Like what was, what was the purpose? What happened, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then it got explained down the road, you know, obviously. And that's, it was awesome. Yeah. It was very good storytelling on both of them. Um, a match that you suggest everyone go watch right now. Right now, I said a match I will suggest that Keith Lee and Johnny Gargano. Okay. Go watch that match right now because that was match was really good. I surprisingly um, did not have high hopes for the Finn Balor and Damian Priest match, and I really enjoyed that one too. I thought that it was a pretty decent card in your house takeover, so I agree with you. Check out Keith Lee and Johnny Gargano for sure. Um, okay, we're going to wrap things up a bit because we got stuff going on. We're running out of time, but Steven, is there anything you would like to let people listening know about you? Um, maybe if they could follow you some sort of. They can follow me on Facebook right yeah. now. They can, they can send me a friend request. They can follow me on Facebook and ask Steven Garcia right now at the moment. I'll be around it. And anything else I got to say is if you want to be a pro wrestler, you want to live your dreams, you want to do the best to your abilities, check out Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, man, and come down and come check us out. I guarantee you, you won't. You will not regret it at all. It's one of the best experiences of my life. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. And I will continue doing this. And if you want to do it too, just come up down to Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling in East Haven, Connecticut, and we will do it. We will show you exactly how it goes down. Cool. And I'll definitely um, add the link to your Facebook um, under the video. And yes, Spirit Eyes Valley Wrestling, go check it out. I know that they've had a couple of like live shows that my brother and dad have gone to. And they're really good. Everyone talks about how great the wrestling is. So definitely Paradise Valley Wrestling, check out. Check out Steven Garcia on Facebook. We'll probably do another uh podcast again soon maybe we'll do since you like a lot of the older wrestling we could do like a watch along to one of the older stuff or something but thank you steven for coming on again follow him paradise valley wrestling east haven connecticut go down and see what that's all about thank you steven i appreciate your time man thank you man all right man